We're, we're living in an incredibly exciting but also daunting time where so many sales are now moving to online that traditional distribution models really need to evolve very quickly to keep up. So for instance, um, uh, our distributors are supplying some of these online marketplaces, Amazon and people like that. And what value are they really added by doing that? Or should we be doing that? That's some of the questioning that's going on. Um, a big challenge we've got is luggage buyers think our products are toy and toy buyers think it's a piece of luggage and trying to get it in the right place in stores is a real challenge. E-commerce circumnavigates that. And really as a brand we want to get as close to our customer, our end user as possible and actually distributors and retailers just get in the way. So um, we can see that the end picture but we're in a... Um, uh, an environment where we need to work with our distributors and retailers to get the product to the customer um, and that's a real challenge for us so migrating to a, a new way of doing business is all part of our business thinking at the moment. The biggest market outside of the UK for volume is the US, North America, um, so that's a very exciting market for us. Um, we, we actually find a lot of the smaller countries do really well, um, so the Nordics are doing fantastically well. Norway, when you look at the population size and how many units we've sold, is our second highest be behind the UK of trunky penetration. Um, so learning there is the smaller distributors, um, they have a smaller market, so they try harder and they sell cross-channel into luggage, toy, nursery, travel stores. Bigger markets that have distributors, they're very focused on just one channel and trying to get them to not just sell into toy stores but into luggage is, is really tricky because their whole setup is just to supply one market. It's been a, a long-held dream of mine to be able to make things back here um, and a few years ago we started investigating whether it was, was cost-effective to do so. I was getting really fed up with not knowing what our true costs were. The cost of shipping was constantly changing, exchange rates were constantly changing, factories were putting their prices up constantly. Um, in the eight years we've been trading, the cost of labour was trebled in China. Now that's a good thing, but it's not great for our pricing. Um, so we, we decided to do a project looking at onshoring and I was amazed to see that when you factor in, yeah, it's going to be more expensive to make here, but actually when you take out shipping duty, um, the, the delay and the ability to react to a market a lot quicker, the pricing came out on par. So it was a no-brainer from then. Um, we did have to completely re-engineer our product to make it cost-effective to make here, so we stripped out all the metal parts and it just snap fits together. But that investment is paying dividends now where we're able to really innovate with our product range. We can carry much less stock and we can react to market demand. Running a business there's always a lot of distractions and a lot of firefighting but to be able to find the time to think and look at the big picture it's all about having a great team.